Here we are again, friends. It's me, Professor Pandemic, here for another lesson today, multiplying fractions by fractions. So there's two ways you can do this. One way is where you simplify at the end, and the other way, which is the way I hope you start doing, is when you simplify before you multiply. This second way is going to be a lot easier, especially when you start multiplying by mixed numbers and the numbers get a lot larger and it's a little bit easier to multiply and simplify beforehand rather than doing it at the end where you get those really big numbers. So as we see here, one way, you already have fractions. So if you've seen my whole number by a fraction video, you know you just multiply three times one to get three, three times five to get 15, and then here you simplify because three can go into both three and 15, which ends up with one fifth. But you can do this before you multiply. If you notice here, you see these threes. And if you can divide something into the numerator and denominator, you can do that beforehand. So three can go into three here and go into three there, which means I end up with one times one and five times one, and it still gets us the same answer. You can only do this simplifying with a numerator and a denominator. You can't simplify two denominators, you can't simplify two numerators, because that throws off the balance of your problem. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. And you have to do it so it balances in a way. If you just change these, you're not actually changing anything, you're changing the value of something. So you have to make sure you simplify in a correct way. So I'll do another example where I show both methods, and then I'm primarily just going to show the simplify. But as you see, either way, you should still end up with my answer when you're done. So let's check out this next problem. All right, friends, I gave you a little bit bigger one on purpose to show the value of simplifying before we multiply. But do either way that works best for you. We have 9 tenths times 5 6. See if you can find the correct answer. Well, mathematicians, you should have ended up with three-fourths for your answer. Now, hopefully this kind of shows you why you want to try to simplify beforehand. Because if you just multiplied through, you ended up with 45 over 60. Which means you would have had to figure out that you had to divide by 15 into 45 and 60 to end up with three-fourths. A lot of kids don't really get up to 15 in their fingers and toes and all that stuff when they're trying to divide. The number's too big which is why you want to simplify beforehand. Here I can see 5 and 10. They both have a common factor of 5. So 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 10 twice. And notice I write the numbers above it so I can see. Because sometimes you might be able to simplify more than once. 6 and 9, they can also be simplified. 3 goes into both of those. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And once we've done all that, we get 3 fourths. Now, let's say you didn't see both of those. Let's say you only saw the 5 and the 10. That means if you multiplied through, you would have ended up with 9 over 12. Much easier to simplify than 45 over 60 anyway, because you can still divide by 3 here and get 3 fourths. So sometimes you might not see all the simplifying, but even if you simplify one thing, you end up with a much nicer fraction to simplify at the end than opposed to this 45 over 60. So I really want you to avoid just trying to do this and multiply through. While it might be the easy way to multiply, it's not gonna be the easier way to simplify. And as you're gonna notice with multiplying mixed numbers and multiplying fractions, you're going to have to do a lot of simplifying. Simplifying is going to be your best friend. So I would make sure to go watch my videos on simplifying, and I would practice doing some skip counting with my basic facts and knowing what common facts you see, like 5 and 10, always 5, 3 goes into 9 and 6. Knowing that's really going to help you progress with this and get the simplifying quicker. I notice this is a really tough skill for a lot of people. It's one of the hardest skills in fifth grade that we do. And eventually you'll get it. It just takes some people more time than others. So let's do a couple more examples 
and let's practice at getting better at this skill. All right, friends, we have two problems here. Let's really work on our simplifying. Let's multiply four sevens times three eighths and nine twelfths times three six. Pause the video, take a couple seconds, work through your simplifying, and when you get to the end, make sure you've simplified everything. Remember, simplifying, the only number that should be able to go into both the numerator and denominator is one. So if you don't get everything, you can still simplify at the end to get the correct answer. So let's try it out, and we'll see you at the end when you're done. All right, mathematicians, our answer to the first problem was 3 fourteenths. We only had to simplify one problem here. Two goes into four and eight, so, or in, actually four goes into four and eight, which is the better one. If you did two, you'd have to simplify again. And we multiply one times three and seven times two, we get three fourteenths, so hopefully that's what you got there. Over here, there was a bunch of different ways to simplify because all these numbers are factors of three. So you could have simplified multiple ways but hopefully you still ended up with the answer of 3 eighths when you were done. If you didn't get 3 eighths, it's probably because you missed a simplifying spot or maybe made a calculation error. But like you said, there's more than one way you could have simplified this problem and come up with 3 eighths. And you're going to notice that a lot. The person next to you or your parents or your teacher might simplify it a different way than you, but as long as you do the work correctly and end up with 3 eighths, you have the right answer because there's more than one way to do a math problem sometimes. Let's do two more before we end this video. All right, friends, I put a real tricky one up there for our advanced people, and we have one that's about the same there, but I want you to try both of them. Again, I would start with this problem if you think you want to start slow and then build into the bigger one, but both of these should be recognizable numbers. Do your best, pause the video, and we'll see you on the other side to see if you have the correct answers. All right, friends, I know this is a tricky day in math, but hopefully you ended up with one sixth for the first answer and one tenth for the second answer. There's more than one way to simplify in each problem, but in all, but in all four of these, they're factors of six, six, 12, 18, 24. So hopefully you use six a bunch of times and it weren't sitting there trying to do even numbers the whole time. But again, multiple ways to simplify, but eventually coming up with one six. Same thing for this problem. Um, could have simplified the 3 and the 6, the 2 and the 6, the 2 and the 10. Um, could have done it a bunch of different ways, but you should have ended up with 1 tenth for your answer. So give yourself a pat on the back for making it through this. This is a challenging lesson. Again, if you need more help with this, which is okay, because this is one of the more challenging lessons of the school year, at least for fifth grade, talk to your teacher, have your parents do some extra problems, work on a math program if you have it. But this is multiplying fractions by another fractions. So, for me, I am Professor Pandemic saying thank you for making it through this lesson, and we'll see you at the next video. And remember, the more you learn, the more you know.